Welcome to Answers Unleashed, a talk show to help you reshape your brain with science and faith to find the answers in front of you. I am so excited. We are back. We are at season three of Answers Unleashed, and I am so excited. I'm over here on the uh, the Pierce College campus where I host the Answers Unleashed show every single week. Uh, we were on break for a while, but today is our day that we are back. And I actually have a Facebook Live feed happening right now on Facebook, on facebook.com slash Point, where we are going to talk about something so amazing today, so spectacular, that will make you think about science and mathematics and being a woman in a new way. And this is my first question for you. Have you seen the movie Hidden Figures? Now, Hidden Figures is an amazing movie, and it's about a person who has created change. Not only one person, but the entire people in the process of launching space vehicles in the middle of the space race. Specifically, Hidden Figures is about a true life story about three amazing African-American women who were fundamental in changing the way that science was understood and how it thrived so we in the United States could participate and be one of the first in the space launch industry. But these individuals, these wonderful individuals, were not highlighted until just recently with the movie Hidden Figures. Now, the true life people were is Katherine Johnson. She was played by uh, Taraji Henson. Uh, it the next person was Dorothy, Dorothy Vaughan. She was played by Octavia Spencer. And Mary Jackson was played by Janelle Monet. Now, when everyone, everyone goes to see this movie, Hidden Figures, they are touched. It has been one of the blockbuster movies across the entire United States. And people are leaving the movie crying. And I must tell you something. I, I was scared to go see the movie myself. I didn't know I didn't know if I could handle going to see the movie. Now, for those of that know me and know my background, you know that I am a rocket scientist. I spent over, well, I spent years, years studying mathematics, and I successfully ha helped launch twenty eight missions to space through the NASA's space shuttle main engine program and NASA's space shuttle program. I won several awards. I became an award-winning rocket scientist. And my TED Talk, Reprogramming Your Brain to Overcome Fear, I share about what I had to do in order to overcome my own fear in order to become this rocket scientist. And when I found out the movie Hidden Figures was going to be released, honestly, I was scared. I didn't know whether or not I could see the film. You see, for 10 years, nearly 10 years, I was in this environment, in this, in this environment of space, launching. Every single day was a challenge, and I wasn't quite sure if I had the ability to be able to watch a film that would relive in me every type of experience that I saw with my own eyes, being a woman of color who launched rockets. Um, I'm really excited. Uh, those of you who uh, watch or look at People Magazine or look at People.com, I'm so excited. Uh, I was just highlighted as the modern day hidden figure by People. And I am so honored, <laughs> so honored to have that recognition, especially during Oscar week. Now, Hidden Figures is a movie that is out uh, and it's up for a couple of different Oscars and it is uh, an amazing film. And I finally decided to go. And when I went to go see the film, I sat in that seat and I watched the film and tears came down my eyes. As I watched Katherine Johnson's life on film and I saw the true story of what was happening with her, tears came down my eyes because I was looking at my life on film as well. And I'm so excited to share with you today what it is like being a modern day hidden 
figure, being a person who has seen the other side of science and now can expose it to the world so people understand how beautiful and challenging space, science, and all these areas of innovation can be. Um, I, I, I was so touched when I watched the film Hidden Figures and I actually went to this movie theater, saw the film, began crying, came home. I was so touched and so moved by what I saw in that movie. I literally stayed up for hours all night long until 7 a.m. in the morning writing about what I saw and my own experiences and how that was just so identical to what millions of people were watching on the screen. I was so touched by it that I wrote an article in the Huffington Post so people could know what it was really like being a hidden figure. Uh, in the movie Hidden Figures, uh, there's three individuals that, uh, true life stories that are played by these just brilliant actresses. And they each travel through a very difficult situation in a journey on being the first, the first in many areas. One individual uh, main character in the film, she was one of the first uh, female mathematicians in the launching group. Another individual was one of the first female individuals to understand the computing system, and she was uh, instrumental in helping other people become trained in knowing the science and mathematics of that. Another individual uh, main character in the film was a person who decided to go against all odds and choose to be one of the first people of color, not only a woman, but people of color, to become a design engineer designing rockets. And when I saw that, my entire life led up to that point and I understood exactly what they went through I when I watched that film realized that I was a modern day hidden figure sitting in that seat of that theater and it became knowledgeable to me that my job is to get out here and let you know let you know exactly what it's like to be one of the first so you can be a first in whatever it is that you plan to do in your own life in this movie hidden figures uh, Catherine Johnson was uh, a person who experienced a lot of of difficulty being a woman in a male dominated environment uh, many times uh, she was looked upon as being a woman, and that wasn't something that was uh, not uh, something that was uh, ex not acceptable, but not some nothing that was common. And I had that same experience, <laughs> and I, I write about this in my Huffington Post article. I remember the second day that I started working, I, I was walking to the restroom, and I remember uh, this man. This man came down the hall, and I remember he looked at me, and he he literally was in shock. And I must preference this. I must say that it this scenario, it was a great blessing because he later became one of my biggest supporters years later. And I, I'm just so thankful for all of his guidance and mentorship. But when I first met him, he was shocked. He was shocked that a woman was actually working on the floor. And he came, and he saw me and he walked towards me and I remember he circled around me he was looking at me from head to toe and I remember thinking to myself what is this man doing why is he looking at me like that and I felt like a museum piece seconds later seconds later a couple of women who were the administrative uh uh assistants or the secretary so-called the administrative assistants the other women that were on the floor at the time they saw me. I didn't know them, but they came over to where I was and they pulled me over into the restroom. And so when they ushered me over to the restroom, they introduced themselves. They said, you don't know us, but we are here and we are excited to see you. We have not seen a woman work on this floor for over 15 years. And we just want to let you know that we are completely here for you anytime you may get flustered. And we want to warn you. There are a couple of men, not all, 
but there are a couple of men in here who are not used to working with women. And they will do anything and everything to provoke an emotion from you. So you may feel uncomfortable. And their goal is to have a man in that role. Now, surely I was completely in shock and I didn't believe that at all. And I thought to myself, that can't be true. But I thought they were really nice. They brought me over to the restroom and they wanted to introduce themselves. And I thought, oh, that's all really cool. But it was surprising because a couple of weeks later, I found out that was the case. It was actually true. There were individuals, a couple of individuals who did not feel necessarily as comfortable working with women, and they would do anything and everything to try and push the woman's buttons emotionally so they could say, look, she can't handle her job. And the reality is that had it not been for these women that came to me and that told me, all right, anytime you may feel flustered, bring us into the restroom with you. Talk it over with us. Never let them see you cry. Had it not been for these supportive women, I'm not quite sure if I would have been able to last nearly 10 years launching rockets. And I thank them because I was so honored to have been helped by them that I ended up mentoring their children and who are now, uh, they're, they're girls that are now doctors and lawyers and civic leaders. And I'm just so honored to have been helped by the women that worked at the location. And the scenario represents the same type of scenario that happened in Hidden Figures. In the Hidden Figures, Katherine Johnson, she goes to the restroom a lot, and that was, that was her place of solitude, but she had to travel miles. Oh, oh I'm exaggeration with mile, but oh, half a mile away to literally go to the colored restroom because Hidden Figures is a movie that's set in 1961 where it was uh, against the law for people of color to be in the same environment of people who were white. And so she had to go miles to just go to the restroom. And when I saw that in the movie and was so touched by that, I realized, oh my God, the restroom, not only in my situation, but in the movie also was a place where we gained knowledge. And I was so honored to be able to write that in the Huffington Post so people could understand my real life experience when it came to that. All right. Now, there was another point in the movie that was so like, oh, my gosh, it was so fascinating. Uh, the main character, uh, Katherine Johnson, she uh, is a mathematician and she's responsible for helping launch. Now, that's exactly what I did in launching rockets. I sat supporting mission control in this room with dark uh, lights, uh, these TV screens on the wall, and I saw mathematical equations uh, uh, run through. I, I shared that on uh, KTLA uh, Morning News the other day, as well as San Diego Living um, in San Diego News, uh, talking about my own experience. And what I used was mathematics to be able to do that. And I was responsible for making sure that the mathematics in all the different areas lined up. There were uh, computer scientists to make sure that there was the coding that uh, allowed all the information in the temperature readings and sensors to work correctly. There were structural engineers who made sure that there was the right integrity of the metal. The, the metal had to be cooked in a certain way, a combination, so it would be so strong and so resistant that when it comes in contact with high-pressure oxidizer or fuel, it would not melt like butter would melt in a pan. That's what we were dealing with. I had worked with individuals who created great mathematical calculations with blades. Uh, there were turbo pump individuals. These turbo pump individuals would calculate the angle of the blade of how it moved. So to give you an, uh, a visual equivalence, they would calculate a pump that would work so well that it would empty an Olympic-sized swimming pool in less than five seconds. This is the type of mathematics that I was dealing with. And I was so amazed as I saw the mathematics being used in all these areas of science, with the chemistry, with the physics, the bending moments. For example, when the space shuttle would start off, it would bend. It would move in and out in 
that was the natural part of when that high pressurized fuel anoxidizer went through that engine. It would be natural for the metal to move and it had to be flexible enough but strong enough to do that. And I used the mathematics for it to launch. Now, uh, in this process of launching the space shuttle, I was so excited because I had the ability to use this not only this mathematics in a well-established program with astronauts, but I had the ability to use the same type of mathematical uh, calculations with uh, creating new high-profile engines that people don't even know about yet. And um, I, I was in a situation just like Katherine Johnson. In the movie Hidden Figures, Katherine Johnson was uh, uh, in this position where she could do the mathematical calculations in her head without a computer. And I'm just so fascinated by that because uh, I, I actually have to write it out. I can't do things in my head in that same type of scenario. I actually write it out and, and figure out all the mathematical calculations through using my hand. But so uh, she was in this predicament where she had to author uh an assignment in, in this work to show how we could launch, but it was not a custom for a woman to be on the same authorship of the paperwork. And when I saw that on the screen, I remember being completely in shock and, and uh, tears ran down my eyes because I went through the same thing. Uh, there was the time that I was brought onto this advanced program and I had been working six months to put this information together. And I researched. They had these books that were like maybe six inches tall. And there were 200 of them that I read in order to understand 200 failures that existed in all the different tests from the, J, from the, the J2 engine, from the Atlas engine, from all these different engines. And I was expected to put all this information together to predict how a failure could happen in the future. Now, it was a very stressful situation. It was long hour days. It was 12, 13 hour days I was working on that, but I was so passionate about showing how we could actually prevent uh, an, an explosion from happening. And, and in that process, so one of the most amazing situations happened because I became an expert. I became an expert with understanding failure launches. I became a, what we call a reliability and system safety expert where I knew and could foresee any type of engine failure that could happen and I could not only foresee it, I could predict it. And all of this work went into this, this report. And the same scenario happened with me, but this, this is the different scenario is that I am the modern day hidden figure and I found out the way to change the outcome. Uh, I was uh, brought in to one of the rooms and one of my uh, friends there, one of the very few <laughs> female engineers brought me into the room and she said, oh, Olympia, what will you do if you're asked uh, if you could allow someone else to present your work when the 500 NASA people fly out to look at this design review, wh how will you respond? And I remember looking at her and wondering, no one's going to really ask that question. I, 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 that's impossible. I've, I've done this work. No one would ask to present information in which I've created. That doesn't make any sense. People don't do that in college. Why would they do that here? <laughs> and she said, just humor me. Just humor me. How would you respond? What would you do in that situation? And I didn't necessarily know how to respond, really. I, I was kind of clueless. And so she said, well, what if you say this? And she said, I am fully prepared to present the information in which I have researched on my own. And I said, okay, I'll, I'll say that. So I repeated those words. And she said, okay, great. I, I just wanted to play that role with you. Let me know what happens. So guess what happens? Probably like three weeks later. I'm not quite sure if it was three weeks or it was like a month later, but it happened like it almost seemed like immediately right after. 
The man that was a part of the program, the one that was overseeing everything, he came to me and he said, uh, Olympia, it's not customary for a uh, woman of your age to give this type of presentation uh, to NASA. Uh, how about I give it for you? And I remember being kind of like in shock. I'm thinking to myself, did he really just ask me that question? Wait, 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 wait. Did he just ask to present the work in which I've just done? And I remember then the recalling the, the role playing I did just a couple of weeks earlier with my friend. And I was prepared to respond. And I said, no, thank you for your concern. I am fully prepared to present the information in which I have researched. So I thought that was going to end. And then he looked at me and he said, well, you know you're going to get bloodied and chewed up when you present, right? And I looked at him and I just repeated myself. That's the only thing I knew how to do. I repeated, I am fully prepared to present the information in which I have researched. Thank you for your concern. I look forward to the presentation. And he's like, all right. And so I left completely panicked. Inside, I was completely panicked. And I didn't know whether or not I could pull it off. And I'm thinking to myself, oh, my gosh. And the doubt came into my system. And I had to literally remove that doubt. And that's why I talk about in my TED Talk. But in that process of like, okay, I had to figure this out, I realized I had the ability to present information in a clear way. And I found every single expert to help me. And I was so proud of myself. I found an expert within turbo pumps, expert over in structural analysis, expert within failure history. And I had them in the audience. When I gave my presentation with the 500 people, I had each of the experts at different places in the audience and I was prepared for any type of question that was gonna come. And I was ready. I gave the presentation and then I looked ready to fall any question because I thought, remember, that I was going to get bloodied. And there were no questions. <laughs> everyone, everyone appreciated the presentation. And not only that, I, in, in the People magazine actually calls this out in their article, I became the rocket science news reporter. I it could explain technical, difficult things in such a clear way that people really appreciated the, the science and the knowledge and the decision making behind it. And in that process, voila, I became knowledgeable. And I not only was the first in that situation, but I also opened the door for other young people to present information to NASA in ways that were respected. And I, I started when I was 21 launching rockets, and I think the scenario was when I was 23. So I was so honored to be the change that I wished to see in the world. And in this scenario, I was the exact same. Ex exact same as... Katherine Johnson's experience and how she overcame that. Now, in the movie Hidden Figures, racism is so still uh, prevalent. And just like it is prevalent today, we see it within uh, all the different marches that's happened after the election. We see it in not only the film Hidden Figures in the 1960s, it's still something that is definitely a defining opportunity for all of us as Americans and all of us citizens across the world to respect one another if, with their diversity. Uh, uh, it's so amazing because uh, <laughs> uh, when I watched the movie Hidden Figures and I saw on the screen uh, information about what the character, uh, Octavia Spencer's character went through, where she was in the library, where she wanted just the, to get the information, and she was shunned away from that. And I, I remember just completely resonating with that experience because it wasn't always easy being a woman of color launching rockets. I would be lying to you and not telling you the truth if I told you that every single day wasn't a challenge. 
But it was a challenge that I chose to walk in because I knew one day through faith that all of these actions that I took was going to pay off in a way that wasn't only going to help me, but it was going to help other people. And if you know about what I do and if you know about the show, you know that I talk about the tree of brain and it's the the left side, the scientific side, scientific side of the brain. It is the right side, which is the expressive part of the brain. And it's the center part of the brain that I call the faith sector. All three sectors together create the, what I call the tree of brain. And the tree of brain is responsible for allowing us to when they communicate, all these three sides of the brain communicate together, it's responsible for changing the way that we see situations and allows us to be able to grow and change not only us and reshape our brain by in the inside of us, but it changes our exterior situation as well. And I, in this process, by deciding to be one of the few people that would get up every morning to go into this challenging situation, I realized that I, I, my life was going to matter and my experiences were going to help people in some way and I had to hold on to that faith. And by holding on to that faith, I then reshaped my own way of thinking about myself and reshaped my thoughts and I'm so pleased that my experience is reshaping everyone else's as well. The I experienced racism when I was launching rockets. I had just won the Engineer of the Year Modern Day Technology Leader Award, and I was so excited about that. And I was so, I was in the newspaper everywhere, and I remember going out to my car, and seeing my car keyed with racial slurs on it, upset that I had won the award. And I remember crying. I went to the restroom and I cried. No one was there at the time. And I went to my manager at the time and, and I told him. And he did everything he could to report this, to, to find the, pre the predator, and, and but he was never found. But I had to realize at that very moment, I had a choice. Was I going to allow someone else's hate, someone else's fear, someone else's ignorance change the direction of my life? Or was I going to move forward in a way that was going to be so significant and so meaningful that it was not only going to change my life, but change everyone else's life? And that's what I chose. I smile when I think about this. I chose to stay there. And I chose to execute my work. And I chose to be the best at what it was that I did. And as a result... That award and that focus and the support from my manager at the time and my directors and the CEO that was there allowed me not only to make a difference within launching rockets, but allowed me to change the way that in that tire analysis was being used at NASA with how we could fly. But getting up and going in spite of diversity and getting up and being present, even though it is not easy, is the way that you and I can make a change in this life. So I hope you go see the Oscars, and I hope I hope Hidden Figures wins in one of the categories, at least one of the categories. I hope you go see the movie Hidden Figures. I hope you always tune in to this show every single week for Answers Unleashed, a talk show to help you reshape your brain with science and faith to find the answers in front of you. And until next time, find me on Facebook. If you're watching uh, us live, you are watching on Facebook.com slash Olympia LaPointe. Find me on Answers AnswersUnleashed.com. You're always welcome to see us here at kpcradio.com on the Pierce College website. And I am excited to help you reshape your brain with science and faith to find the answers in front of you.